good morning students in the last class we did the reported speech the same is going to continue in spite of cyclonic effect rainy season is going to start hope the atmosphere is going to be clear and cool and uh, we will have good health cheer and uh, prosperity in the future now let us move on to some examples on wh question yes or no question imperative sentence and uh, exclamatory sentence these are general examples not from the text once again to refresh you statements in the last class example i did it now look at the sentences available here he said to krishna how many brothers have you as i told you some of the important points say basically tense pronouns and uh, adverbs to be changed from direct to indirect time adverbs especially and uh, the helping verbs tense in the sense helping verbs as well as main verbs regular or irregular verbs now look at the sentence first one wh question he said to krishna how many brothers have you the moment uh, you look at you read the sentence i mean the question you must uh, remember who tells whom you must understand it remember in the sense you must understand and then remember all the ingredients available there he said to krishna how many brothers have you it is a wh question wh question begins with the wh word and then the helping verb the main verb available all these are very important he said to krishna how many brothers have you so wh word and then helping verb here you do not have main verb helping verb functions as main verb and this uh, helping verb functions as main verb is a concept which you already studied in the first puc in direct speech he asked krishna how many brothers he had so remember once again that uh, with the regard to wh question you need not use any other conjunction other than the wh word available there the same word functions as conjunction how many brothers he had simple past so inversion of the subject and the verb and it is not as question instead it is a statement which i told in the last class once again i make you remember let us go through the yes or no question that is available direct speech the teacher said have you done your homework once again present perfect tense have you done subject you done main verb have helping verb have you done your homework the same is converted changed to indirect speech the teacher the teacher asked him or her him or her i have written because it could be the question that has been asked to a girl or a boy if you write him only there is no problem both are possible that's why i have written both pronouns the objective case pronouns if he or she had done his homework past perfect tense helping verb main verb remember one of the factors that uh, when you write asked in the wh question and here yes or no question as also asked after asked usually there is an object reporting verb asked is the reporting verb which i told in the last class the reporting verbs in the reported speech must be suitable to the question that has been asked in the direct speech you cannot write any reporting verb which i told in the last class once again i stress the fact because sometimes the reporting verb goes wrong you write some other verbs for example you may write inquire you may write write uh, 
demanded etc but uh, those are not uh, necessary and those are not convenient especially they are not convenient to these questions and that is why it's simply an uh, question that has been asked for information and it is not inquiry nor demand now, now let us go to imperative sentence direct speech keep quiet said the mother to the child and i told in the last class imperative sentence in the sense commands requests instructions these are available and uh, i told you that imperative sentences when they are changed to indirect speech they take the form of infinitive the direct speech keep quiet that takes an infinitive form to keep keep quiet to keep quiet the mother asked the child to keep quiet some of you may ask a question sir why is it asked because it is a child anyway there need there need not be an order or command to a child that is why it is a request is also possible it is uh, an asking is also possible because uh, it is a child considering the context asked is acceptable the child should not be hurt by the mother the mother asked the child to keep quiet so this is what i have said infinitive construction to keep is an infinitive construction and it doesn't it doesn't have any subject in front of it uh, the mother asked the child to keep quiet is uh, the infinitive construction added to the main class main class subordinate class in the last class i told once again you have to remember the same exclamatory sentence he said what a beautiful picture it is and it is an exclamation exclamatory remark exclamation mark is available he exclaimed that it was a beautiful picture exclaimed exclamation mark usually takes exclaimed the verb introductory verb that it was a beautiful picture a statement it to which it has been converted to so remember the introductory verbs here asked there in the imperative sentence also it is asked for the convenience of this particular sentence and here exclaimed so remember the introductory verbs reporting verbs remember the tense from direct to indirect that has been changed if it is present that has been changed to past in the yes or no question and in the wh question both and in the case of imperative sentence tense doesn't change except the reporting verb it has become or it has been changed to infinitive construction and in the case of exclamatory sentence what is present that has been changed to past so think of all these rules once again and let us go to some examples from the text itself now students please remember that uh, there is no guarantee that this question would be asked or that question would be asked from which lesson you may have certain questions whether the reporting uh, uh, reported speech will be available from sunny morning or will it be available from uh, uh, the interview which is available in the text books uh, about which uh, boris has uh, said a lot with the elephano or else will it be from the gardener or will it be from two dear there is no guarantee so what i give you or what our teachers our fellow teachers from english department will give you is the idea based on the tense based on the verbs available there and the time adverbs that are available let us go through some exercises from the text itself so that you will get sharpened you will be tuned to the situation now first example from the very one act play that is sunny morning 
Donna Laura Are you coming tomorrow? Don Gonzalo Most certainly If it is a sunny morning and not only will I not scare away the birds but I will bring a few crumbs Donna Laura Thank you very much Birds are grateful and enjoy sorry and repay attention now look at the sentences available I mean the conversation it is a script form we call it script form I told in the last class and uh, you can refer to your textbook where first one is quote form second one is script form and the third one is speech bubble and uh, this is script form so script form in the sense you need not require any inverted commas there because it is directly what the actors what the speakers have said the same has been written here now Laura are you coming tomorrow Gonzalo most certainly if it is a sunny morning and not only will I not scare away the birds but I will bring a few crumbs Laura thank you very much birds are grateful and repay attention now the moment uh, you get reported speech any question for that matter the first work is that to find out whether it is a statement whether it is an s or no question or double h question or imperative sentence or exclamatory sentence now your duty is to find out the types of sentences Laura are you coming tomorrow your duty is to find out the sentence so are you coming tomorrow begins with a an auxiliary primary auxiliary and it is a sentence beginning with the auxiliary verbs in the sense it is an s or no question that you have to understand next second Gonzalo speaks most certainly if it is a sunny morning and not only will I not scare away the birds but I will bring a few crumbs no question items available here and it is a statements wh question is not available yes or no question is not available imperative look is not available exclamatory items are not available so it is a statement 
then laura thank you very much birds are grateful and repay attention so this is also a statement that is uh, available after finding out the types of sentences first one is an answer no question then statements available now next is that context is very much important to be understood and your exercises whatever that you get in the question paper second puc annual examination whatever reported speech for five marks that is available is from the text itself since it is the text that has that is important you must be very thorough with the text which context who speaks to whom whether it is simply a statement whether it is an order all these have to be remembered and understood that uh, is very much essential with regard to change from direct to indirect now laura are you coming tomorrow laura asks gonzalo at the end of the very play now you have to write the reported speech are you coming tomorrow is simply a question it is not an order or it is not a request etc it is a question that has been asked by laura to gonzalo so you have to write reported speech let me write i yes in direct speech dona laura asked don gonzalo then what that you have to write you have to remember you have to, you have identified that it is an sr no question sr no question in the sense it requires a conjunction which conjunction if or whether i told in the last class no other conjunction is acceptable so dona lora asked don gonzalo if or whether both are equally good both are right but uh, i write only if because only two letters and easy to write so dona lora asked don gonzalo if you changes to third person that is he that is gonzalo are singular he is singular and that is why past this is present continuous tense has to be observed present continuous and past continuous if he was coming then tomorrow in the sense the time adverb has to be changed to if he was coming the next day full stop no question if he was coming the next day sometimes you forget tomorrow to write or change to the next day please don't forget and uh, are you coming he was coming all the items have to be observed very carefully and write very properly laura asked gonzalo if he was coming the next day now next gonzalo most certainly if it is a sunny morning and not only will i not scare away the birds but i will bring a few crumbs now most certainly means what we have to understand you have already listened to what the teachers have explained in the class and that is why most certainly in the sense most probably and uh, not probably certainly he said most certainly in the sense it is very sure that uh, he would come tomorrow and that is why we can it is the action that has to take place or it is yet to take place and that is why would is required there because will the model auxiliaries you have studied possibility in the first year puc you understood this factor probability possibility in the sense it is would and that is why it is highly improbable may we ask may is used for permission etc also but at the same time when you use may might this is uh, those are prob uh, may might for probabilities but would for action that would take place in the near future and that is why you must uh, write here most certainly the same word can be written but it is not uh, required also or you can put it in other way that is why let me write 
Don Gonzalo replied that he would come. So he would come highlights most certainly. Once again, you don't, he would come most certainly, you can write, but it is not very essential. He would come if you write, it is enough. Most certainly can be changed to he would come. You may have a doubt that how would we change it into this sort of a construction. That is uh, why I have told you just now that who speaks to whom that has to be remembered. And uh, what is the idea of the speaker? What is the intention of the speaker? What has he thought of? What has she thought of? All these have to be understood from the context. Without understanding the context, nothing can be done. After understanding the context, think of the tense. After thinking of the tense, think of the types of sentences. Then other ingredients, the verbs, the adverbs, time adverbs and the pronouns etc. are available there. Gonzalo replied that he would come. Then what he said later, if it is a sunny morning, he would come. If it was a sunny morning. Full stop. And then continuation. And not only will I not scare away the birds, but I will bring a few crumbs. Gonzalo speaks. He said that he said that not only he would not will changes to would past form scare away the birds but he would bring a few crumbs so once again observe what is available if you write you may have a question as i have said just now that is if he was coming the oh, sorry um, replied that he would come most certainly if you write acceptable he would come if you put that is also equally good replied that he would come if it was a sunny morning present is available here it pronoun same pronoun has been written is changed to was a sunny morning he, rep he said that not only he would not scare away the birds but he would bring a few crumbs will has been changed to would and I has been changed to he the third person pronoun because Gonzalo speaks there he would bring a few crumbs next Laura thank you very much birds are grateful and repay attention so thank you very much who thanks whom that is to be remembered Laura thanks Gonzalo that is why Laura Dona Laura thanked Gonzalo him in the sense Gonzalo thanked him very much and further said
said that birds <coughs> were grateful and repaid attention thank him very much thank you very much present thank you very much present thank you when you get such items when you get you must remember thank you very much it is uh, uh, whenever we say thanks for example to somebody thank you i thank somebody or i thank him or i thank her etc so laura thanks gonzalo that is why it has been written laura thanked him or thanked <coughs> gonzalo very much and said that birds are grateful changed to birds were grateful and repaid attention repay present repaid simple past or changed to were so this is how the transformation or the conversion the change from direct to indirect is taking place and that is why remember that your duty is not to i told you in the last class that it is not a mechanical exercise it is purely an exercise based on knowledge based on understanding and that is why understand each and every ingredient and then change the same into indirect speech now let us move on to next exercise kerchief as a shoe brush don gonzalo why not dona lora do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief don gonzalo what right have you to criticize my action dona lora a neighbor's right
look at the sentences once again that is first one do you use a handkerchief as a shoe brush yes or no question second one why not once again wh question second third one do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief the vice versa the other way what uh, laura has said yes or no question gonzalo what right have you to criticize my action once again wh word begins with the wh word wh question and then laura a neighbor's right a statement it is so think of the very types of sentences and then once again change the same into indirect speech now laura asks gonzalo then gonzalo of course responds or he also asks questions now write do you use a handkerchief as a shoe brush so it is merely the reporting verb that uh, you have to use there which uh, i have been telling you again and again dona laura asked gonzalo if don't forget the conjunction with regard to yes or no question if he that is gonzalo used simple present to simple past if he used a handkerchief as a shoe brush full stop reporting verb is asked or asks gonzalo so asked if he you changed to he if he used a handkerchief as a shoe brush now gonzalo don gonzalo why not he has asked why not in the sense why can't i use a handkerchief as a shoe brush is what that we have to understand when somebody asks a question the response must be in the same tense do you use simple present the answer goes in the same tense why don't i use a handkerchief as a shoe brush but in this context the context makes us to think of the fact that why can't i use it what problem is there if i use handkerchief as a shoe brush so these thoughts come in the mind of gonzalo and that is why we have to think of the context and uh, accordingly the verbs that we, we have to prepare because why not uh, here you don't get any verb directly unless you think of the context remember the context and some students may find it very difficult and that is why i have just make you to remember i have just made you to remember why not now let us write don gonzalo asked her why she didn't use because simple present so this must be in the simple present or why couldn't i use is also acceptable because that is a modal auxiliary in the past why he didn't use or why he couldn't use is also acceptable why he couldn't use that is also accept acceptable why he didn't use or why he couldn't use any one you have to write both are acceptable and uh, some teachers may restrict to this because uh, it is a custom in english that uh, if a question has been asked in simple present which you learnt in the first puc 
the answer must be in the simple present. If it is asked in the simple future, the answer must be in simple future. So, depending on the question, it is better to stick to that. But uh, if you write why he could not use, nobody can argue that it is uh, wrong. Why he could not use or why, sorry, why he did not use or why he could not use. Then next, Laura. Do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief? This is just like the first one. Yes or no question? Laura asked Gonzalo. If he used a shoe brush as a handkerchief. Now next. Gonzalo asked, what right have you to criticize my action? Gonzalo asked Laura. Now beginning with the WH word and then helping verb is available. Object is available. Helping verb function as, functions as main verb. To criticize is an infinitive construction. So after understanding this much, let us begin with Gonzalo asked Don Gonzalo asked Laura what right she had to criticize his action. Now next, a neighbor's right. A neighbor's right in the sense, a question that has, has been asked by Gonzalo is, what right have you to criticize my action? So Laura replies that uh, she has the right of a neighbor or she has the neighbor's right. Both are acceptable. So the same to past, it has been to be changed. So let us write, Dona Laura replied that it uh, was a neighbor's right. What right have you to criticize my action? A neighbor's right. It, in other words, this has to be understood. It is the right of a neighbor or it is the right of a neighbor. Or you can also say that it is neighbor's right. It is also, it is the right of a neighbor. It is neighbor's right. It is a neighbor's right. Both are acceptable. So. The present has been changed to past there. Laura replied that it was a neighbor's right. So it is a pronoun that has to be included because what right have you to criticize my action? That my action is identified with the third person pronoun that is masculine gender, it. And then tense from is to was and you may have a doubt some students may have a doubt sir there is no helping verb there is no it at all but uh, I have told you that these are to be remembered because such when such conversations are available 
we have to remember what has been said why has been said where has it been said and uh, what to be done with the to arrange it into a sentence or to change the same direct speech to sentence we have to understand the context and change the same into sentence properly hope that you have understood this and uh, if at all you have doubts you can call back oh, let us move on to next uh, example Don Gonzalo, are you speaking to me, Senora? Dona Laura. Yes, to you. Don Gonzalo. What do you wish? You have scared away the birds who were feeding my crumbs now once again look at the examples don gonzalo are you speaking to me sonora yes or no question laura yes to you in the sense yes i am speaking to you or speaking to don gonzalo now gonzalo what do you wish laura you have scared away the birds who were feeding on my crumbs yes or no question statement wh question once again another statement now let us write change from direct to indirect don gonzalo asked Laura if or whether I write if he she sorry if she was speaking to to him
Don Gonzalo asked Dona Laura if she was speaking to him. So remember the very pronouns and then tense and uh, think uh, once again about the very conjunction yes or no question in the sense it must be if and uh, if he was speaking sonora can be deleted because that is uh, a respectable term that is available and uh, respect that has been shown which is not required because it is not uh, very mechanical i told you and that is why if she was speaking to him then dona lora replied that she replied positively that she was speaking to him yes to you yes i was yes i am speaking to you laura said to gonzalo so yes to highlight this replied positively that she was speaking to gonzalo speaking to him then gonzalo what do you wish and uh, in the present uh, dona lora yes to you you may replied in a positive manner if uh, we write this much is it enough you may have a doubt or a question like that dona lora replied positively isn't it enough of course replied positively if you write it is enough but as i have said, told you or said to you just now that uh, it uh, must be written by giving complete idea of what that has been said in the direct speech are you speaking to me senora asked gonzalo so when you write when you tell the same in the indirect speech in the reported speech it must be understood properly that uh, dona lora replied positively if you write it is enough replied positively what is the reply she was speaking to him so that is uh, this reply has to be understood highlighted and that is why if you write that it is the best choice and best answer that she was speaking to him then don gonzalo asked laura what do you wish wh question what she wished simple past you wish simple present it has been changed to simple past what she wished what do you do has been do wish has been changed to wished what she wished then next you have scared away the birds who were feeding on my crumbs statement so flora is telling responding to what gonzalo has asked so that is why now said that or replied that said that is enough here he had you have you changed to he he have had he had scared away the 
the birds who were feeding on her crumbs who had been is also possible and if you write feeding on her crumbs so in the sentence you have scared away the birds who were feeding on my crumbs the sentence has you have scared away present perfect changed to past perfect he had scared away present perfect had been changed to past perfect the birds who are feeding on my crumbs and uh, past continuous from past continuous it changes to past perfect continuous as per rule but sometimes it remains the same and that is why as per the rule been past continuous who had been feeding on her crumbs all the time this is not possible and that is why present continuous if available it has to be changed to past continuous from past continuous it changes to past perfect continuous but all the time these changes are not required because it depends on the context now what happens here you have scared away the birds who are feeding on my crumbs the first part is available the main clause is available in the present perfect the second that means the subordinate clause in the direct speech i am speaking you have scared away the birds the main clause in the is in the present perfect second part which is a subordinate clause of this sentence direct speech i am speaking of were feeding on my crumbs the action that was going on in the past who were feeding on my crumbs is expressed here and the context the conversation is going on between the two people at that time you have scared away the birds that action has been over in the immediate past and this action second part where the action was going on in the past the two different contexts available and the same has been changed to indirect first one you have scared away the birds speaks of the fact that the action was over in the immediate past or the action has been over in the immediate past and the subordinate clause which speaks of were feeding on my crumbs who were feeding on my crumbs speaks of the activity that was going on in the past continuously now when we think of the same in the indirect speech laura said that he had scared away from present perfect to past perfect the birds who had been feeding on her crumbs is acceptable as per rule but if you write who are feeding on her crumbs that is also acceptable because the this action and this action the main clause and the subordinate clause there also the action actions do not agree each other from the point of tense first one speaks of what that has been over in the immediate past second one speaks of what that was going on in the past means the yesterday's activity as all of us know that in the one act play what has what happened was that yesterday that action went on and that probably she <coughs> she was highlighting the same and that could be written in the past perfect continuous but if you write who are feeding on our crumbs that is also acceptable because we know that there is a rule that first action has to be expressed in the past perfect second action must be in the simple past and that is why this is uh, 
past continuous and this is past perfect from that rule this is also acceptable hope you have understood if at all you have doubts call back call me back at the number thank you students thank you thanks so much